Hi, I'm Kelly and welcome to ABTV News, where we cover the latest political and world events. Here are this week's headlines. Oil prices fall below $40 a barrel as OPEC ramps up output. Benghazi car bomb kills 22 and injures 20 amid Libya clashes. Czech president says bar refugees to prevent barbaric attacks. Indians have higher workplace satisfaction. France's disappearing mosques. Global oil prices fell below $40 a barrel on Monday after a new Reuters survey tallying oil output from OPEC countries showed outputs for the 13-member bloc at record highs when compared to figures in recent history. The overall increase in global crude output has dragged oil prices down 20% since they broke above $50 in June. The survey found that Iraq increased oil output in July as the National Army made gains against the Islamic State's oil production and supply network. The former Gulf country's oil officials confirmed on Monday an increase in crude production from 3.175 million barrels in June to 3.2 million barrels in July. In Nigeria, a country that has been inundated by separatist attacks on oil facilities by the Niger Delta Avengers and related groups, upped outputs despite militant efforts. The West Texas Intermediate stood at $39.97, according to Bloomberg's report, and Brent oil, considered to be the global price benchmark, stabilized at $42.01. To meet an uptick in seasonal demand for oil, Saudi Arabia, OPEC's de facto leader and top exporter, cut production levels close to record highs in order to limit Iran while it attempts to regain lost market share. The Wall Street Journal reported that Saudi Aramco had also cut its price per barrel to Asia by sizable margins over the weekend. The Iranian oil minister confirmed the oil glut in a statement to Iranian state television on Monday, but insisted that the balance between supply and demand would be restored in due time. American oil drillers added 44 rigs last month, the highest amount in any month since April of 2014, according to Baker Hughes' latest rig count. OPEC's key rival, Russia, has been increasing supplies for three straight months as well. A spokesman for the forces and medical officials said a car bomb targeting security forces in the eastern Liberian city of Benghazi has killed 22 people and wounded 20. The blast occurred in a residential area of the Gawarsha district, the scene of fighting between security forces loyal to Libya's eastern government and an alliance of Islamists and other opponents. The alliance, known as the Shura Council of Benghazi Revolutionaries, claimed responsibility for the blast, according to a statement posted on media sites linked to the group. Benghazi has been plagued by violence since eastern commander Khalifa Haftar launched a campaign against the Shura Council two years ago. His forces have advanced in several areas in recent months, but have not gained full control of the city. There have been occasional car bombings, but the toll from Tuesday's blast was unusually high. The attack targeted a gathering of the Special Forces Unit of Haftar's forces, known as the Libyan National Army, a forces spokesman Fidel El Hassi said. A Reuters witness said the powerful explosion reduced a three-story building to rubble. Haftar's forces are allied to a government that has been based in eastern Libya since 2014, when armed groups set up a rival administration in the capital, Tripoli. A UN-backed government moved into Tripoli earlier this year, but Haftar and the Eastern government have so far rejected it. On Tuesday, a spokesman for the Czech president, Milo Zeman, said the president believes his country should refuse to take in refugees to ensure they cannot commit barbaric attacks. Zeman, whose role is largely ceremonial, is the country's most vocal opponent of immigration, opposing even the government's modest plan to take in 80 Syrian refugees this year, a tiny proportion of the millions fleeing civil war. The spokesman told a regular news conference that Islamist attacks in France and Germany in recent weeks proved his point. Yuri Ovekek said the Czech country could not afford to risk terrorist attacks like those seen in France and Germany, and that by accepting migrants, the country would create fertile ground for barbaric attacks. The Czechs and other Central Europeans have been the most critical of the European Union's response to the migration crisis in which over a million people entered the bloc last year. The government opposes an EU quota system to redistribute asylum seekers, but has not followed Slovakia and Hungary in challenging it in the court systems. Hungary is holding a referendum on October 2nd to ask its citizens whether they accept the EU system. It's not clear how Brussels will be able to force those countries to take in refugees against their will. Germany's European commissioner, Gunther Oettinger, blasted Siemens' comments, saying the refugee quotas were agreed upon by a large majority and are now European law. Oettinger, the commissioner for digital economy and society, told the German broadcaster FFN he believes a president who goes against European legislation weakens Europe as a whole. The Czech prime minister's government has agreed to take in 80 Syrian refugees from a Turkish camp. 
The Prime Minister has said that it is not possible to have uncontrolled migration, but that using collective guilt and saying every Muslim is a terrorist is not the way to proceed. The CVVM Institute poll in May found 61% of Czechs were against taking in war refugees, up from 52% in October. Another 34% said refugees should be allowed to stay only until it was safe for them to return home. A recent survey showed Indians are more satisfied with their workplace environment compared to their Asia-Pacific counterparts. An employee survey of the Michael Page workplace said about 62% of respondents in India said they were either satisfied or very satisfied with their workplace environment compared to just 54% of their counterparts in Asia-Pacific. The survey is based on 4,000 employees across various job levels and industries in Asia-Pacific. It also said that employees in India were more optimistic about the future of their economy, with 54% of respondents rating their current economy good to excellent against 33% for the rest of Asia-Pacific. According to the managing director of Michael Page India, Nicholas Dumoulin, there is a general sentiment of optimism in India right now. He claims the current economic outlook is positive and professionals are encouraged by the commitment to India from both global and local firms. He also said that in addition to the positive outlook, the government's Make in India initiatives have created more opportunities for India's export market. Those opportunities led to increased investment in the manufacturing sector, in particular firms specializing in the production of chemicals, plastics, as well as pharmaceuticals. The survey also compared the quarterly job confidence forecast in India between Q1 and Q2 of 2016 and found working conditions of employees in Mumbai and Bangalore declined quarter on quarter. In Mumbai, it dropped 52% in Q2 from 62% in Q1, and in Bangalore, 68% from 75%. Over the next 12 months, employees in India were more optimistic around better job training from 73% in Q1 to 81% in Q2, the survey said. The expanded scope of functions rose from 68% to 73%, and increase in compensation level went up from 54% to 71% it added. Working overseas was seen as an increasingly attractive option, which rose from 68% compared to 64%, the survey said. French Interior Minister Bernard Cazenbeu said on Monday authorities have shut down 20 mosques and prayer halls they found to be preaching radical Islamic ideology since December. The Interior Ministry tweeted about the decision to close the mosques. According to France 24, of the country's 2,500 mosques and prayer halls, approximately 120 of them have been suspected by French authorities of preaching radical Salafism, a fundamental interpretation of Sunni Islam. Cazenview said that France has no place for those that incite hatred in prayer halls or mosques. The announcement came days after French Prime Minister Manuel Valls called for a temporary ban on foreign funding of French mosques. A Senate committee report on Islam in France, published in July, found that though the country's mosques are primarily financed through individual donations, a significant portion of their funding also comes from overseas, specifically from Morocco, Algeria, and Saudi Arabia. The same report called banning foreign financing of mosques absurd and impossible, calling instead for more transparency. Because of France's 1905 law establishing the separation of church and state, the French government cannot finance religious institutions directly. Some experts say this rule has made many mosques reliant on foreign funding. Cousin View also announced on Monday that French authorities would be working with the French Muslim Council to launch a foundation to help finance mosques within France. Cousin View said that he hopes a foundation to finance the cultural aspects of cultural institutions and scholarships for secular education will be created by October. This has been ABTV News, and these were this week's headlines. I'm Kelly. Keep watching American Bollywood TV.